first ism that we have been practicing for so many years you for 30 me for close to 20 journal mm-hmm. journalism journalism right. Uh, mainstream media today has been captured by the Modi government. The time for non-alignment is over because something very dark is happening to our republic. The BJP is using state power, state machinery to make politics impossible for the opposition. The government is committing foul after foul after foul. No red card to the government, only red card to the opposition and and the opposition parties. There appears to be a problem when it comes to secularism and the mm-hmm. TNC. Political violence is a reality in Bengal, but no matter which political entity is fighting which two isms are in are in, a, in a path of collision raja raja duddhe it's the sipahi who's dying and it inter, it, 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 it in effect means that dalits and muslims are dying no matter what i think mamta banerji is the only leader the only leader who had the guts on 22nd february when the consecration of the uh, 22nd january when the ram mandir uh, consecration was happening she led a, actually led a public multi faith march uh, down the streets of calcutta with representatives of all faiths a woman a plebeian woman without any patronage without any family she's you know we talk about trolling on the internet and you know getting upset because of twitter. she was literally beaten on beaten the street on the street and that's she was some, beaten yeah, on the street yeah. how do you deal with accusations of being a nepo kid you know that uh, you I... know you come from privilege you come from an industrious background hmm. yeah i don't consider myself a dynasty at all i consider myself an ambedkarite because hmm. i believe in social justice okay. yes i i quote ambedkar all the time the journalists of republic tv according to me are not journalists they are propagandists they spread hate and they are not fair or accurate so when a propagandist goes to a particular place and demands the va- demands the freedoms of the journalist you are an avowed liberal you say you go as far as to even say i'm a left liberal no i'm yeah. not a left liberal no okay you're a, no i'm not a left okay, okay, liberal fine, at all okay, i'm okay, a liberal. classical liberal classical liberal classical okay, liberal, classical liberal. Okay, a bunch of people are asking you about what is the liberal take on the question of affirmative action someone compared you to the last queen of france you know from marie antoinette and said i think marxism is full of intellectuals and intellectuals i don't think make good politicians once you become this politician who we can actually take <laughs> when you have now you have don't even have a slate we can't say you have a clean slate you don't even have no, a slate no i don't have a slate yet So when your slate is a little uh, I, I know, populated, mean, I, I, we'll go after you. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah of course, is, please. This, I, I, I welcome it. The most influentialism in the country today appears to be Hindutva. It has taken a long time for this ideology to come of age. But what happened to the other ideological movements that began in the early 20th century? The RSS will turn a hundred years old next year. but so will the communist party of india ambedkarism marxism liberalism dravidianism feminism gandhism what role are these great big isms of the 20th century playing in the 21st century what relevance do they have today I'm an atheist in the same way as I'm an a leprechaun. Why have there been casteism existing in the country still today? Feminism, by definition, the belief that men and women should have equal rights. So the right. nature of the system is to be as mean and rotten as you can uh, to try to maximize profit. The national elections are around the corner, and what better time than now to talk about isms? I'm Sudeep Tom Mandal, and welcome to this special election series of What's Your Ism? Today we are going to try and understand the ism of the Trinamool Congress Party's Rajya Sabha nominee Sagarika Ghosh. Hi Sagarika. Hi Shadipto. How are you doing? Nice to be with you. Nervous. This is your uh, first big interview as a politician. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Looking forward to it. I'm nervous to too. But this is a, a new medium for me. Right. Yeah. So you'll help me. I'm, I'm hoping. Of course. I mean, uh, let's just chat and keep the conversation going. Yeah. Yeah. So the show is not about. your alliance choices mm-hmm. it's not about the real hustle bustle of the polit- of politics right now mm-hmm. you know in mm-hmm. the build up to the election it's about isms mm-hmm. right so we're going to try and discuss some theoretical aspects and things of like course, that of course i'd but, love that <laughs> yeah uh, but first things first i mean the first ism that we have been practicing for so many years you for 30 me for close to 20 journal mm-hmm. ism journalism right journalism and you completely abandoned us you're leaving why What Not happened? at all, actually. I uh, I continue to uh, write my columns, mm-hmm. but I have left full-time journalism. 
uh, and I've chosen to join a political party. And the question is, why did I do this? Uh, Shudipto, of late, I have been distancing myself from the newsroom. Mm -hmm. uh, since 2020, I've actually pulled out of the newsroom. I was in Times of India as a consulting editor. I've pulled out. I uh, was writing my books and my columns. And uh, because frankly, uh, what is happening to mainstream media? Now, I hasten to add mainstream media, not you guys in the digital space. Uh, can, I, can I read out what you said about work? the mainstream media? Yes. There is little space anymore for quality journalism, what I consider good writing, writing that interrogates, provokes, communicates ideas. This is your yes. piece when you justify yes, uh, yes. getting into politics. Yes, mm. I, 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 firm, I believe that, that uh, mainstream media today has been captured by the Modi government. Mm. Uh, I think what has happened to mainstream media is a catastrophe. It's a calamity. Uh, just recently, you may have seen that the uh, major news channels were censured actually by the National Broadcasting Authority yeah. for spreading hate. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, mainstream media has become a propaganda machine. Uh, it's become a purveyor of hate. It's become a purveyor of bigotry. And it's become a, com a, a, a outrider and trumpeter of the regime. And this runs counter to what I believe journalism should be. I believe journalism should be anti-establishment, should ask questions, should interrogate, and there's no space left for the kind of writing that I want to do. I want to do questioning, interrogating writing of the government, any government, whichever government, you know, this is, poly, this is mm. party agnostic. Whichever government is in power, the journalist's job is to question that government and do fair, accurate journalism, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But today, I just find that journalism has become, mainstream journalism, I hasten to add again, has become uh, propaganda, has become a uh, purveyor of hate. And this, the time for non-alignment is over, Shudipto. The time for non-alignment is over because something very dark is happening to our republic. Mm -hmm. The values of the Indian republic are being dismantled. It's being changed. Hindutva, which is the governing ideology of the, of the time, of the government, I believe is profoundly anti-constitutional. And the basis of the project of 1947, the constitutional values uh, uh, we created in 1947, I believe these are in serious danger. And the dangers go far beyond anything that I could have addressed as a journalist. Uh, you know, simply writing my articles or writing my books. I felt that that was, you know, it was, it, I was doing, I was raising my voice, but the space for that was continuously shrinking. That is why I have not said goodbye to journalism in the sense I've not said goodbye to writing. writing. I continue mm -hmm. to write. It's my core capacity. But, but the writing will but, now uh, be what? How do you put it? Uh, I don't want to use a strong word, but do you think it will be colored by the fact that... Uh, I'm, in, I'm in the opposition. It will al always be taken with a pinch of salt now. No? Don't you think I don't think so. Credibility will be like eroded to a But I don't think extent. so because I'm a member of the opposition. And mm -hmm. as an opposition... From an opposition point of view. From an opposition point of view, I will be voicing the views of the opposition. And, you know, remember, I have not joined... A, the ruling party. I've joined the opposition at a time when the opposition supposedly doesn't have a hope in hell in 2024. That is what is being said. But I want to keep alive the questioning, the uh, the interrogation, uh, the sort of examination of this government as a voice in the opposition and lend my shoulder to the wheel of the opposition's cause because I believe that that space has to be protected because you see if the opposition space is protected then other spaces get protected down the line then journalism gets protected then NGOs get protected then civil society gets protected but if the opposition dies democracy dies I get that but can I I mean uh, from from a journalist to a journalist yeah. right yeah. Can, I, can I can I say that I'm a little disappointed that okay fine the, the legacy media is what it is it has Terrible. been but one could argue that it has always been like that. The legacy media has been... Not to this extent, should it okay. Not to this okay. extent. I'll, I'll let that go. But I'm just saying, you could have come on to our side, right? Yeah. Which is, you know, here are these That's outlets, a fair point. That's a know. fair point. I mean, I think you because, guys... See, you, you saw uh, what we've been doing, right? Like, did you yes. see the Karnataka elections? These five outlets, we came together. I then saw again. that. And I also so, think that I laud you for this uh, story you've done on the... 30 firms which have been mm. for ED, yeah, which yeah. have been proved by the ED yeah. and IT and then forced to donate to yeah. the BJP. So I think and, you... And you know what, sorry to cut you there, yeah. but what I love about that exercise mm -hmm. is that there were so many people behind the scenes working on that yes, story. The yes. byline is what you see as the tip of the iceberg yes, really. Yes, yes, so yes, many yes, people's yes. hard work, you know, it went into it, both in terms of the sources, mm -hmm. 
some other journalists who had mm-hmm. also worked behind mm-hmm. the scenes you know there's so much excitement now mm-hmm. it's the, the okay the tragedy i would say still is that we are we are we, are, we don't have that captive audience the newspaper is not landing with a thud outside your mm-hmm, door mm-hmm. today but the, i think you guys are doing a fantastic job i and think and you should have joined us no i'm too old <laughs> Okay. I'm too old. Okay. I'm going to be 60 this year. Wow! You're supposed to say you don't look it. No, not at all. Yeah, good, 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 yeah, good, good. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so I'm I'm 59. Yeah. I've had over three decades in journalism, mm-hmm. and my medium is you know ultimately the newspaper. I was a newspaper reporter and a newspaper writer yeah. and an op-ed writer for years, and then I joined journalism as a mainstream news anchor. I love that, but you know my heart is in print, mm. and but these are my mediums. You know, television and and mainstream print. So I don't have the technical know-how. I saw Dhruv Rathi's um, incredible mm-hmm. video on uh, on on democracy. You know, I really had a lot of admiration for that. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's not my medium. I don't have the technical know-how for that. I don't have the skills to be as effective on a digital platform, perhaps as you guys can be. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, at this stage in my life, uh, I thought that given the skills that I have of uh continuously opposing uh, religion based nationalism continuously opposing hindutva the trinamool stands as a bulwark against uh, the bjp in bengal in the east i thought i would be best utilized in the political opposition okay we'll come to that part yeah. okay there will be yeah. an opportunity for you to speak about sure, the tnc sure. all but i still want to like because you're a senior journalist there's a lot yeah. young people can still learn from you yeah. and things like that you know one of the things i suppose your generation of women journalists mm-hmm. did was to introduce that female gaze yeah and we, yes, yeah so yes, i'm yes, talking yes. about if you are in that age category i mean my own for, former editor we just spoke about parvati yes, nandi yes, yes. you know this whole generation of women who came and said hey uncle step aside yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, what can you talk about the female gaze so what 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 in your gaze allowed your journalism to stand out do you think your gaze as a woman uh, journalist No, impact your journalism in any way you know i you know apart from the from being a woman i think that was important as a woman journalist i think we shattered a lot of glass ceilings in my time mm-hmm. uh, i joined journalism in 1991 uh in the times of india where you know the the big beats the defense and foreign affairs was all done by the men and the women had to do health and education because those were seen as not important beats yeah. when they were actually very important beats um but tv changed all of that you mm-hmm. know and uh, i think today when i see the young you know when in cnn and ibn when i used to see the young female reporters i was full of admiration because they would just hoist the camera and they would be off just like uh, any other guy uh, i think we we shattered the glass ceiling i don't think we've completely shattered the glass ceiling because i think we'd still find it difficult to find a woman editor in chief you know you go up you go up my you boss go up, is, and then you stop my boss is one of your them your bosses in the digital space it's very different yeah but in mainstream media it's very difficult to find say uh, either a woman uh, a editor in chief the top job or a female news anchor at 9 9 pm is the big slot and it's very difficult to find a woman Even there you know they are not there are few very few. i think there's one or two um but uh, but you and know, one so, and a half of them is a right winger that's not even good <laughs> so uh, I, i don't consider that journalism mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. so uh, uh, my point is that you know we did shatter many glass ceilings because we went everywhere and you know to me the joy of being out in the field was unparalleled with your notepad you're going out there you're talking to people you're traveling from place to place it's exhilarating so but i think what i also was doing uh was uh, consciously or unconsciously at, at first keeping alive certain values that i instinctively uh, wanted to constantly defend right secularism multi faith plural india uh the belief in the individual the sort of struggle for social justice of individuals i mean and you were... think you think it has something to do with the fact that your your instincts are feminist yeah my instincts are feminist my instincts are uh, are are uh, uh, towards social justice uh i am a constitutionalist i read and reread the constitution of india several times when i was a student uh and i believe it's a supreme document it's the, it's it, uh, it's it's a real it's it's a real blueprint of progress right. you know and i i would recommend everybody read the indian constitution so i i consciously or unconsciously kept these values constantly alive or try, i was trying to keep these values alive and i think that made my voice uh maybe provocative mm-hmm. uh maybe it made it uh, it made it sometimes maybe strident 
but uh, for me, uh, this, this these values was were very important, and I think that's what that's what marked uh, marked me out. But I was, you know, throughout I was very fiercely independent. I did not want to align with any political party because I didn't find that uh, constitutional values were being upheld anywhere. So there there are values that need to be upheld for the larger nation, and there are values that need to be upheld in the profession inside the newsroom yes right totally. and uh, you know we talk about the safety of uh, vulnerable groups inside yeah, a very of... high pressure environment in a very uh, volatile mm -hmm. you know workspace mm -hmm. which is a newsroom around your generation of women are the ones who also started organizing there were there were formations like the nwm we right? started organizing we yeah. used to be how very... did that how did that come to the aid of women in newsrooms do you think that was a very important phase these 90s, early 2000s, where women journalists... No, I think were... women journalists began to increasingly speak out about, uh, you know, more equitable working conditions. Mm. Uh, for example, you I... Do you a shout out to NWM in that regard? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. NWM absolutely. and that whole formation. All of you, them. you were yes, part yes, of yes. all of that. Also, yes, right? yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and um, I, I think that, you know, I think that uh, for, for, for my, I mean, for, in my time, we campaigned a lot, for example, for uh, working mothers. I was mm. a working mother. I had two little kids. And, uh, you know, I used to come, we used to come across what I call the glass club. Okay, there's the glass ceiling. Right. But there's also the glass club. You know what the glass club is, right? No. The glass club is what they do after work when the men go out and raise the glass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. they go to the press, the club, press club or they go huh. to the watering holes or right, they go to right. the various places and they sit all night or late into the night yeah, you yeah. know, raising their glasses, which we can't do because we have to go home and take right. care of the kids. And in any case, we can't do because you'll be misunderstood and stereotyped. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is the time, you know, after work socialization, which men are able to do, creates a lot of exclusive bonding and linkages and yeah. exclusive clubs and, yeah. and they sort of shut you out. Yaar hai, kind of. Tu mera yaar hai, tu mera drinking buddy, <laughs> drinking buddy hai. Hai. You can never be anybody's drinking buddy, yeah. right? You can't yeah. be. Mm -hmm. So because you're cut out of these informal networks, you find yourself getting more and more marginalized as you as you go uh, up. So we you know we used to find what one of the things I used to campaign for is, you know, more social spaces yeah. between uh, between uh, in, in works uh, working environments. You know, instead of you going and doing your which glass are gender club, neutral. which are gender instead of you going and doing glass club at night, mm. let's have more social spaces where you know we we sh shatter boundaries between each other so that I'm not left out of your exclusive clubs. Yeah. Yeah. So this was a way in which uh, uh, this was one of the things I used to uh, try and talk about a lot, and uh, I, I hope it's working. But I still think the glass club uh, uh, rules. So. I mean, I'm an, I'm an admirer of this generation of women who kind of opened up these spaces and things like that. But then uh, there is also this criticism that, uh, you know, they didn't do enough for people whose reality is intersected with theirs, mm -hmm. right? For other marginalized groups inside the newsroom. Uh, you were talking about, uh, let's say, Muslims, Dalits, mm -hmm. Adivasis. No, I raise right? my voice for Muslims. Uh, uh, Muslim communities all no, the no, I'm time. saying in terms of newsroom. In terms of newsroom, newsroom diversity, right? Right. Uh, somehow, you know, you these 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 experiences you speak of, you know, essentially it is social exclusion, right? Yeah. Uh, what is the what if, if As a woman, I mean you're people will get excluded. very angry when you say intersectionality, but it is a fact that what is it that's the very basic common ground between uh, a Muslim or a Dalit and a woman, mm -hmm. you know, which is that mm -hmm. you're socially excluded. You are right. To that extent, you know, there is a sense that there could have been more from your side because you understood this. We understood you know, for, exclusion for, like in and CNN we fought IBM, exclusion. In, yeah. We fought exclusion. But, you know, I think we were too busy waging our own battle, which was such an uphill battle. Mm. Uh, and I think, you know, more solidarities could have been built. Mm. Uh, more connections could have been built between other excluded groups. Uh, that didn't happen because a lot of the time, you know, as a journalist, as you know, a lot of the time you're just basically racing to the deadline. I mean, you're you're running to file your story, you're running to get your source, you're yeah. running to cal cultivate your source. Yeah. And the newsroom kind of takes a backseat to what you're trying to do at work all the time. So you're 24 by 7 and in TV journalism, you're 24 by 7 running. Right. So uh, 
you don't spend as much time in the you know managing the newsroom or thinking about the newsroom perhaps as you should mm. but i think a lot more effort is being made now How so? which uh, How i think i think there is in aren't, aren't you guys a lot more we diverse, have a lot diverse of employees? diversity in our, yeah that's true uh, you, and you, you guys uh, are much more fight. diverse employers it's a, it's a fight and it's, uh, it's... i mean i love that about politics for mm. example you know i mean the sheer diversity of, of people that you meet and who are involved in the political process it's unbelievable i mean you learn to form connections with people mm. who are not like you who perhaps don't speak the language that you do but you can still become friends with them and march together for a cause and you know i find that uh, that is to me very exhilarating but you still concede that do, there's been I a failing but i still concede that yeah. that you know that that the a the pressures of journalism plus you know a lot of it comes down to the owners to the proprietors and what kind of policies they follow you partly own no, cnn no 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 no, never, oh, no, 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 no. i was never i was never a owner Ra, uh, rajdeep my husband was one of the promoters but we were never uh, owners of the of the channel as such okay uh and uh mcn and ibn yes i mean much more perhaps could have been done for uh uh for uh diversity in the newsroom but again you know when you're busy setting up a channel you're running the channel you're standing up to pressure you're trying to do journalism and in tv as you said you're running all the time yeah. we didn't prioritize the uh, newsroom as much but i have but to say but how news do you think but news suffered in some that way i know that i i have to say that we did actually have a very diverse uh, uh mm. group of people i mean if you look at the cnn and ibn of the early of the early uh, avatar uh it was you know if you look at our anchors if you look at our reporters it was diverse diverse by way of gender and religion i would say a few muslims here and there gender, a few christians religion uh, there was uh, there was uh, there was also community there was also That's community it? i don't want to go to any names okay. uh, you know there there were uh, there was certainly uh, there was certainly the people from the bahujan samaj represented mm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay interesting now i mean speaking of that so I I see that you have throughout your career got trolled a lot you know throughout <laughs> throughout yeah at least by from the time you got into television as a medium mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know I don't want to make you uncomfortable how but how do you deal with accusations of being a nepo kid you know that uh, you I... know you come from privilege you come from an illustrious background mm -hmm. are you know you have to account for your privilege so there are two things one when it comes in a very offensive way but then mm -hmm. there is sometimes a genuine call to acknowledge that privilege how do you strike a balance between the two because knowing you you do i do i do accept i come from privilege mm. but my family is self made we are professionals my father was a senior bureaucrat uh, my aunt is a was my former uh, my late aunt was a diplomat my other aunt is a former judge of the supreme court and we are a self made uh, educated bengali bhadralok family uh, that does come with privileges but these are not privileges of money or these are not privileges of uh, of uh, sort of crony capitalism or privileges of politics so that i came into a family which had which was a political dynasty i don't consider myself a dynasty at all mm. i had to slog all my life through academics i was academically very bright i did very well and i won a scholarship to oxford i um, i studied at oxford i did well there i got a good degree and i came back and joined journalism now uh, i can't deny that i come from a educated bengali family but uh, my parents and my uh, my you know my parents don't come from from privilege i mean my grandparents were certainly not uh, uh, wealthy or uh, you know in that sense wealth? so see in india you could be wealthy and you could still not be allowed inside a temple right Yeah, you could be wealthy and so you could still not. So in terms of cost, not. yes. Mm -hmm. In terms of cost, I am. You come. What the Sadgop? No, that's the the, the company. No, I'm Kayastha. Kayastha. Okay. Kayastha. Okay. So, uh, Kulin Kayastha, Kulin Kulin Kayastha. whatever. I, I didn't even know about this. So I don't yeah. identify with the birth-based category. Mm -hmm. You know, no, I but believe. No, you don't. But people will identify you. People as. identify me as that, and so yes, mm -hmm. perhaps you know, I am. Uh, uh, what you call upper caste but you know they, they don't and and though that is a privileged category i recognize that mm -hmm. but on the other hand it's not as if uh, i didn't have to work hard all my life i've always had to work hard and prove myself nothing was given to me on a platter mm -hmm. i'm still writing i'm still writing books i'm still producing i'm still producing content but yes i mean i had access to english language education uh i had access to a very good education but then i got into st stephens on merit on on my own merit mm -hmm. 
uh, and uh, you know I did very well in my board exam. So I'm actually quite confident that I uh, I'm self-made. Self-made. Okay. Uh, so that journalism thing will will now move on. Okay. Uh -huh. From journalism to real politics. Yeah. Because that's where you're at right now. Yeah. And uh, you said a couple of uh, interesting things about the opposition. You know, which makes me wonder then. Uh, where are we? We are also kind of fighting a good fight because you said, of course, you know, uh, but uh, the opposition is the last gasp of Indian democracy, mm -hmm. right? I think so. Okay, but look at the opposition. No, look at the state in which it is. Uh, because when you say it's the last gasp of this thing, I mean they are still playing their little uh, inside games. They are still uh, not clear ideologically. Right, I, I went to uh, cover the Chhattisgarh elections, mm. right, and here you have the party which is supposed to take on Hindutva, doing Ram, Van, Gaman, Path, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you remember, no, mm -hmm. Bagel's mm -hmm. flagship project, mm -hmm. right, uh, and also just managing the elections very badly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right, just the election management itself was so poor, mm -hmm. you know, that you wonder, are these guys serious, like, I mean, how Kamal Nath mm -hmm. sabotaged his own party, how allegedly our Gehlot did. And I'm, I'm talking about the Congress and you can say, ah, Congress is exactly like that kind of a party. Mm -hmm. But we see this across the board to A, there is no ideological clarity, mm -hmm. B, some very, very bad management. Mm -hmm. So you come across wondering if it is really uh, that, that the BJP has taken on the ideological space, it has occupied so much that there is no room, mm -hmm. or whether that is an exaggeration and that people are actually losing the battle more than them winning it. So there are two things here, Shudipto. Uh, one is the concept of an opposition in a democracy. Mm. And the other, th other point is, what is the opposition itself doing? It's the facts about the current opposition. Mm. Now, the first thing we need to defend, I think, is multi-party democracy. Because if, if we become a one-party state, one leader, one nation, one language, one clothes, one food, one uh, way of thinking, one leader, one supreme leader, we are then a dictatorship. So the one party state, I believe, has to be resisted at all costs. The multi party system must be defended because the multi party system is what keeps democracy alive. One party state is autocracy and, and also a one party state armed with a huge mandate is a predator on individual freedom. So, and will tell you what to eat, what to wear, what to love, who to marry, you know, how to live your life. So the one party state must be resisted at all costs, right? So there is the concept of keeping alive multi-party democracy. There, I think the opposition has to exist. It has to just exist. I mean, you, you cannot wish away the opposition. There must be an opposition, whether in the states, whether at the national level, we have to have an opposition or a broad theoretical level, right? Just so that multi-party system exists. What the opposition is facing now, huge challenges. But look at it, you've got the ED. 95% cases uh, of the ED are against opposition members. Funds are being squeezed. Opposition chief ministers are being arrested. Heman Soren, it, has been, it is unprecedented in the history of independent India that an opposition chief minister has actually been arrested. Summon after summon uh, uh, against Arvind Kejriwal. Uh, he, the LG snapping at his heels. Uh, you know, media, mainstream media squeezed out, squeezes out the opposition. There's no space for the opposition. Keep dumping on the opposition. Keep criticizing the opposition. Ra 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 on the regime all the time. Ra 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 on ruling party all the time. So, what is the opposition? Look at the look at where the opposition finds itself at this moment in time. You know, I mean, the opposition is literally. It, look at the way uh, 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 governors are, are acting. Governors in Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Bengal have been accused of playing a partisan role. You've seen how in full glare of the camera, a returning officer in the Chandigarh mayoral poll was actually defacing ballots to make a BJP win possible, right? So in every which way, the opposition is being squeezed. The opposition is being pummeled relentlessly from all sides all the time. The BJP is using state power state machinery to make politics impossible for the opposition, to make any kind of life of, uh, impossible for the opposition. Only I will exist. Only BJP will exist. Nobody else will exist. 
one leader one party one dress one god one religion one language one food one dietary uh, choice that's going to be the bjp no one else has any rights the 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 the, the identities of all the, uh, all the, of the states the culture of the states the leaders in the states the uh, parties in the states none of that matters only the bjp will 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 survive now in a football game let me give you an example do you follow football yeah. or do you follow cricket both more cricket less football okay uh, uh. so in a cricket let me let's just talk about a cricket match <laughs> okay. in a cricket match two teams agree on the rules uh. do they agree on the rules or not yeah, yeah. the public also agrees on the rules now supposing in the middle of the match one team says okay the rules have changed i'm going to constantly hit sixes and the referee is only going to allow my sixes he won't allow your sixes the umpire won't allow sixes from you or fours from you the umpire will only allow sixes and fours from me also i will never get out i'm never going to get out only you will get out your team will get out you keep getting out you keep losing wickets but i'm never going to lose wickets and the media applauds this saying ra wow fantastic master stroke the rules have been changed look at how the opposition is being beaten by this force but you're changing the rules of the game yeah yeah you're not allowing a level playing field you're saying that a the there are no neutral umpires the umpire is favoring one side one side all the time and showing in a football game for example showing the yellow card or the red card only to one team only to the opposition the government is committing foul after foul after foul no red card to the government only red card to the opposition and and the opposition parties so the opposition yes there are numerous challenges there are challenges of message there are challenges of ideology there are challenges of unity every political party faces a lot of challenges but look at what is happening to the opposition i mean the mantra of the bjp is opposition mukt bharat hmm. why is that how is that possible that's not that's not democratic you can't wish away the opposition the opposition in a democracy the opposition has a formal established role it's established role there's a leader of the opposition who is like a constitutional authority he or she holds the government to question he has a he or she has a formal role in in the ruling structure the house parliament is oppos- is the opposition's house that's where the opposition holds the government to question so you can't say that there will only be there, there won't be any opposition then then what are you i mean are you jean bedel bokasa who's going to become bokasa the one crown yourself king and say you know i'm uh, i'm 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 the king of I, i'm the sort of you know i i am the state i am louis the 14th le tat c'est moi i am the state mm. so uh, since i am the state uh nobody can can say anything about against me and if you say anything about me you're anti national you're khan market gang latians gang or tukre tukre gang some other gang urban naxal anarchist khalistani you know you're you you what you're doing is you're robbing the opposition first of credibility with your social media army and name calling mm. then you're demonizing uh, the opposition and finally you're actually questioning the opposition's right to exist and this is happening also with protesters right you're demonizing protesters women uh, wrestlers are protesting on the street they are not uh, they are uh, actually being funded by the congress and therefore they have to be hauled away humiliatingly farmers are protested uh, protesting on the road they are khalistanis they are not gen- genuine farmers they are they are anti national agents they are anarchists they have to also be uh, tear gassed and you know nails have to be put and their their passports have to be cancelled you know there was even a move to cancel the passports of the protesting farmers students are protesting students must protest students are made to pro- students may be believing the wrong thing but it's only by believing the wrong thing that you learn you have you have to have the liberty to be wrong so students are protesting they are the tukre tukre gang they have to be jailed somebody is pro- protesting against ca nrc they are anti nationals they have to be jailed somebody is protesting against uh, climate change as a climate change activist who's uh, circulating uh, uh, some information on social media she's a she's a she's a she's a, she's got a toolkit and you know disha ravi she mm-hmm. has to put sedition yeah. sedition has been put on uh, disha ravi mm-hmm. you know and some other journalist is going to siddi kapan is going to hathras to cover a story you've imprisoned him on the uapa under terrorism laws and he struggles to get bail 
Why is uh, someone like a, that activist Omar Khalid still in jail? Nobody knows. He's be, I mean, he, his, his bail plea has been rejected 14 times. Right. You know, so uh, we'll look at the opposition leaders who are in jail. Manish Sisodia is in jail, the Deputy Chief Minister of uh, Delhi. Heman Soren is in jail. Mm -hmm. A whole lot of AAP ministers are in jail. So are you going to just jail and imprison anyone who questions uh, the government? I mean, we are looking at a situation where you're squeezing not just the opposition, but you're squeezing protest. And protest is a fundamental outflow from the right of freedom of expression and right to life and liberty. So you, you have to have the right to protest. Protest is a fundamental right. So uh, what I'm trying to tell you, the upshot of all this is what I'm trying to tell you. You're trying to say that, is that things the, are bad right now. No, and I'm I saying things are, things are dark and the opposition is being squeezed from all sides. So when we castigate the opposition mm. for whatever it is and there are, there, there are issues with every political party. And yes, you're right. I mean, perhaps there are organizational issues with some party. Perhaps there are leadership challenges with some other party. Perhaps there are, uh, there are uh, 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 message, message issues with other party. There are, all of these issues are there. But at the very first basic, mm -hmm. can these parties exist? They have to be allowed to exist. They're not even allowed to exist. So, you know, whatever, I'm saying we separate the two things. Let's have, do we, do, do we, we can, we can examine the opposition, examine the problems that the opposition has, examine the problems of message and ideology, examine the problems of organization. Yes, a lot of problems. But the other point, the, th the larger, more urgent point is that they just have to be allowed to live. They have to be allowed to exist. One cannot cancel out the other, that the opposition is bad, they don't have a message, they don't have an ideology, they don't have leaders, so finish them off, annihilate them. So I get that. That can't happen. I, I get that entire that thing. That can't and happen. And the reason I didn't interrupt you is because... Yeah, sorry, you know, I spent... I was no, 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 it's important. I, like I said, even before we started yeah. this discussion, for us to take every opportunity to list out all those things that you have yeah. is important. Okay, and, and yeah. I suppose it in a, way, in a way defines the existence of outlets such as ours. You know, because most often, which I that's think, what which and I think it's very brave that you're giving me space to talk. No, no, you, you should, know, absolutely, and that you're giving me a space. You my, know, I, my honestly, only thing is, my, honestly, hmm. I wouldn't, ha I wouldn't be able to say, say this on mainstream media. Hmm. Would I be able to say all of this on mainstream media? Well, how, how many, how many, who are the corporates who've uh, uh, contributed to PM Cares, or how many died in COVID? We, we, we can't we ask can't, these questions in mainstream media. But, but I, I, I do feel, and this is an argument that is a running argument. Okay, just the other day, uh, I was in Hafta with uh, with Abhinandan and. Uh, uh, you know, th we again started discussing the same thing, you know, where, where I was taking this position that, hey, we have to uh, also, while we are talking about communalism, when we are talking about dictatorships, alleged dictatorships and all that, we have to in reinvestigate or we have to ask ourselves about the quality of our secularism. Important point. The quality point. of our secularism. Uh, the, with Sitaram Yachuri, okay, it was a, not a very easy interview with him, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, the same thing kept coming up, you know, saying that uh, why are you not talking about what uh, they are doing. The, the thing is, we have to hold people who are talking like you, people who are talking about secularisms to higher standards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And that I suppose is also an important role. While yes, I mean, you cannot go after the opposition. If you if you if you don't, I suppose, in terms of credibility, in terms of informing the public, giving them the right to know, you can't airbrush the failings you of can't. The, I mean, of course, in, you have particularly to... in the case of a party like uh, the TMC, if you'll allow me to say mm -hmm. this, right? Yeah. Uh, because uh, you know, I mean, you've barely been nominated and already you're in the middle of a storm because of Sandesh Khali, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I'll give you a second or two to talk about the Sandesh Khali thing, sure. you know, and how sure. it is symptomatic of politics in Bengal. And uh -huh. that whoever comes over there does this kind of politics. In fact, it is the method it is the it has become the nature of politics over there, and you are an avowed liberal. You say you go as far as to even say I'm a left liberal. No, I'm right? not a left liberal. No, okay, you're a no, I'm not a okay, left okay, liberal fine, at okay, all. Okay, I'm okay, a liberal. classical liberal. Classical liberal. Classical, okay, classical liberal. Okay, let, we'll not go segue yeah. now, but I'm saying okay, you're a liberal. How does your liberal self not get a little? Uh, okay, that's a very good. That's this? a really good question. I think in every political party and in every uh, democratic political party, there may be individuals within the party system who uh, are not uh, part of a certain way of thinking. And uh, there are those individuals who perhaps com who do commit mistakes. There are lumpen elements in every party. And uh, I think that at the end of the day, we have to look at how a political party responds. 
how does the political party uh, respond? It, you said that they, they, so how did the political party respond? Okay, so I saw party, your statements. You said, hey, that guy has been arrested, you know, mm -hmm, and the law he has been. He has been, and you know, the law is taking its course. But uh, both of us can agree that I, I am sure I'm now appealing to you as the journalist, right? Uh -huh. Where you can agree that there was a delay. Okay, number one. But, you number know, two, I, I have no, to say. No, just, just quickly, yeah. number two, you know, there was this uh, prohibitory orders imposed over there, as a mm -hmm. result of which even journalists couldn't land up mm -hmm, on the spot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The opposition is trying to stir up trouble, so you, you can probably say for some time stay out, so we are, that's why we are imposing prohibitory mm -hmm. orders. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the 144 section applied to anybody who wanted to go and find out what's happening over there. No, apply to who? Apply to journalists, journalists who, they were not, uh, of Republic TV, who are not journalists. The journalists of Republic TV, according to me, are not journalists. They are propagandists. They spread hate. And they are not fair or accurate. So when a propagandist goes to a particular place and demands the va demands the freedoms of the journalist uh, to practice hate and propaganda, uh, he will invite consequences. He or she will invite consequences. So let's leave Republic TV out of this. Because I, I don't believe that, you know, who is a journalist? A journalist is someone who practices fair and accurate reporting. Hmm. Right? You have to be fair, you have to be accurate. You can't go in there seeking to incite or seeking to uh, uh, create propaganda or seeking to create situations that inflame because you want hate for profit. Because you want TRPs and you so want you're hate. you saying only so, Republic TV was not allowed over there. I think there was a case of the Republic TV journalists. Uh, TV, TV, uh, I was not TV there, so you tell me. I mean, you are saying that journalists there was, were there. Journalists yeah? were there. You, YouTubers were there. And I think that it was important that the women come out and they were... Certainly the mainstream media was there. But Okay, and so basically, was, I, I didn't want to delve too much into it because it becomes current yeah. and it's mm -hmm. not this thing. But, you know, if, you, if uh, I wanted to take a broader view of things, you know, mm -hmm. we talk, talking isms. Th there appears to be a problem when it comes to secularism and the mm -hmm. TNC, if you'll allow me to say this. Because uh, it seems that the two, two most vulnerable sections in Bengali society, which is the Namashudra and the Muslim, mm -hmm. have, have continued to, like... One thing that people say over there is that political violence is a reality in Bengal, but no matter which political entity is fighting, which two isms are in, are in, a, in a path of collision, Raja Raja Duddhe, it's the Sipahi who's dying and it, 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 it in effect means that Dalits and Muslims are dying no matter what. They are the ones who are the worst victims of the violence. In Sandesh Khali also, it's a, I was looking up the demographics of that place, 65% is SEST mm -hmm. in that place and mm -hmm. that vulnerability has not been addressed and therefore the claims to a superiorism, the claims to secularism kind of ring a little hollow, no? To a I don't think so at all. No? I don't think and so at all. See, because... I completely Sandesh disagree Kali with that. Sandesh Kali is a one-off thing. There are these patterns. So, you you know, I had this one case, I just got it down somewhere here. Yeah, the Boktui massacre. Mm -hmm. Right? The Boktui massacre, four uh, Muslim homes were tossed, 12 ind individuals burned to death. Mm -hmm. and, I don't uh, think that was that was uh, there was any TMC. Uh, no, no, the TMC uh, block committee president was arrested. Uh -huh, but he was yeah, arrested. So, yeah. arrested. The party remained largely silent on the issue. Case was transferred to the CBI mm -hmm. by the Calcutta High Court, which determined that the police had not conducted an adequate in inquiry. In in, in addition, uh, there are you know several uh, atrocities now seen. look so, don't use no, incidents to stain not, an not entire incidents. party no, no, don't inc use don't use no, incidents no, I, to stain not... or taint an entire party then should we say that there's a rape in uttar pradesh there's a there are uh, instances in uttar pradesh no, wrestlers no, 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 having no, no, no. so shouldn't that be no, laid no, no, at mr modi's door no, that's what that's what i'm saying so there is a growing uh, anger in the muslim community Okay. Against also, the TMC, I don't think so. Against the TMC. I don't think the, so. The, the uh, kind of actions that were taken against the ISF by the TMC. What's I your view of the ISF, by the way? Is it? Do you think it's like a right-wing Muslim organization? How do you I think? I think, look, I apply the test of constitutionality. Okay. If, you, uh, if you abide by the rules of the constitution and in, in India, then certainly you must be allowed to function, whatever your religion, whatever your persuasion. Mm. Uh, if you do not abide by the rules of the constitution, then you, then you will have to face the rule of law so that is my take on on uh, on uh, on uh, entities that are allowed to exist and not allowed to exist but i would like to say that you know you make this point about secularism i think mamta banerjee is the only leader 
the only leader who had the guts on 22nd February when the consecration of the uh, 22nd January when the Ram Mandir uh, consecration was happening. She led a, actually led a public multi-faith march uh, down the streets of Calcutta with representatives of all faiths. Yeah, quite spectacular. Also, yeah. That was quite spectacular. I, I think that was spectacular. That. And yeah. I also think she celebrates Christmas with the mm. Christians. She celebrates Eid yeah. with the Muslims. And she celebrates uh, 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 Hindu festivals. She's a very devout Hindu. And in fact, there are many TMZ leaders who are very devout Hindus who... Uh, who are worshippers of Kali and um, uh, so so in in that sense I think Mamta Banerjee is truly a plural multi multi faith leader I think she genuinely is and and also uh, I also think that uh, that you know that uh, 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 credit is often not given to um, the fact that there are two M's who stand by Mamta Banerjee election after election, which is Mahila, which, which had a huge, uh, she had a huge jump um, uh, in the Mahila vote uh, in mm. the last election, and Muslim. Mm. I think they stand like, like sentinels by Mamta Banerjee, which is why the BJP is constantly painting, you know, using various words to describe, uh, to describe the secular forces. But again, you know, I would say that, that you know, for me, I mean, um, think about it, a woman, a woman, a plebeian woman, without any patronage, without any family, yes. without any you about Mamta uh, Banerjee, oh, yeah, without yeah. any 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 she's, dynastic she's uh, to yeah. okay. dy sets up a political startup, a political startup. She's you know we talk about trolling on the internet and you know getting upset because of Twitter. She was literally beaten on beaten the street. Beaten on the street, and that's she was beaten yeah, on the street. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. sets up a political startup. Yeah. She she keeps it going. She keeps she wins. She's a three-time chief minister. Uh, she wins and she gets, you know, she get, there are attempts to bring her down even as chief minister. She's vilified, she's stereotyped. And, she's a bit of an, and what I like about her personally, because I, I have a lot of, you know, anti-caste, say, let's say, sympathies, mm -hmm. is that she was not an insider in your Bhadralok circles, by the way. No, she was not. She's a, you know, she's a, she's, she's a, she's a. Though she's, she's Banerjee by caste. She's, you know, she's, she's a, a she's a, a, a. The Bhadralok look at her as. Uh, I mean, once upon a time, this, she used to be this. She was, she was, she was, she was, she was abused by the left. Yeah. I mean, the left, the so-called progressive or, left yeah. uh, leaders, used no, to all call that, her, all, that call is, all of that. that. So I think that is uh -huh. a remarkable life story. Yeah. So I think, and I think to say that the TMC uh, is, uh, you know, is not secular, I think it's a big, big mistake. No, I think that's a big say, mistake. So what is secularism, right? That's why I said. Should we now reinvestigate the we quality have of our to, secularism? We have to look at secularism much more, as I say, as a doctrine of righteous administration. I've written about this uh, in, in an article. I think that, for example, as a liberal, mm. I do not approve of, for example, the ban on Salman Rushdie's uh, satanic verses. I do not approve of bans on uh, any books or plays that don't uh, chime with secular opinion. So do, do, for do example, you then agree? That's why. So I gave you for an example. So example, the film, the play, Me Nathuram Godse Bolto Hai, right? Ah, ah. Now, Nathuram Godse is repulsive to me. He's, yeah. he's, he assassinated my hero, yeah. which is Gandhi. But I would still not ban a play that says me Nathuram God se bolto hai because to me that is a clamp down of freedom from. of speech that, that's where I'm so, from. That, the, so when I ask about the ISF right it's a Muslim political party mm -hmm. which is claiming that it's being persecuted mm -hmm. by the TMC not being allowed to organize not allowed to grow its leaders have been arrested on flimsy you cases. have to pass the test of constitutionality so what if you're passing the test of constitutionality is upholding the rule of law non-violence uh, a, 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 a inclusive membership of, for all and abiding by... So you're by, saying they're violent and they're... I'm not saying that. I'm saying, hmm. are you passing the test of constitutionality? They're not, you're saying... Is, I don't know. I have no idea. But I'm just saying okay. that if a political party or any, this, this any party, political entity... I don't know about yeah. it, but I'm just saying every political... So I wouldn't want to get into specifics. Okay. And okay. I'm just saying that every political entity that exists in the in the landscape must pass the test of constitutionality. Okay. You talked about three M, uh, two M's. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, Mohila uh, and Muslim. There is another M which is on which you can't really, you know, you can't figure out which way it's going, which is the Motua. So, was she, right? the, the exceptional so, Motua uh, leader is actually one of the uh, one nominees, of the other nominees, nominees with me. Yeah. So from Mamta Bala Thakur, yeah, 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 she's from yeah, yeah. Thakurbadi, and her yeah. uh, relative is from in the yeah, BJP. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know her very. I mean, I, I was very yeah. impressed with her. What's happening there? What's happening in Mutua politics? I wouldn't like, I mean, maybe you'd speak, you'd speak to Mamata, she'd be able to tell you. <laughs> now, I'll speak to you, you're from a party. I, 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 think, I, think, I think it would be better to, 
get a real uh, uh, insight into the Mathua sh- Shomaj from uh, Mawasa. Mm. But did you ever report on them when you were in Germany? Not on the Mathuas, but, uh, but of course I, I, I know all about them. I read, I mean, I'm, I'm very conversant with, with the community. Mm-hmm. politics. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay, uh, now speaking of Mathua, there is also the Rajabongshi. Uh, there are also, there's a fairly large population of, uh, you know, SCs in, 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 uh, in Bengal. Uh, do you think uh, some of the positions you've taken on reservations, right? Mm-hmm. Now that you're no longer a journalist who can, who's entitled to her view. I think they hold. You, you know, I consider myself an Ambedkarite because mm, I believe in social justice. Okay. Yes, I, I quote Ambedkar all the time. Right. I uh, I quote Ambedkar all the time. I am uh, actually uh, sort of uh, you know very uh, admiring of Ambedkar's critique of uh, hierarchy, uh, very admiring of his critique of uh, of uh, uh, certain orthodoxies, and also of certain uh, you know social evils uh, of of in, of Hindu society. So yeah, I think the Ambedkarism Ambedkarism is a very fundamental strand in Indian liberalism. Okay, so. Your your views on reservation, right? So we were. I was reading that section uh, that you shared. You know, so the, uh, peop- a bunch of people are asking you about what is the liberal take on the question of affirmative action, and you said this is my take. There are some four pages extracts from your book, mm-hmm. and you focus, of course, on the, you're, you're you're quoting Rajaji, you're quoting uh, Kaka Kalekar. Mm-hmm. Kaka Kalekar said supposedly that reservation should not be on caste basis; it should be on economic basis, and. Rajaji was saying that, uh, you know, by by making special privileges available, mm-hmm. you are uh, painting a bullseye on this community. They attract the eye of the rest of this, uh, the society, all of that. But what's your solution? Your solution is capacity, uh, capacity building. building. And, uh, you know, there should be more colleges, there should be more institutions. Why have this feral competition? Huh. And uh, then I was following that Twitter thread and someone compared you to the last queen of France. <laughs> you know, Marie Antoinette, and said, you know, you know people I think are Twitter, not, people let's are not you don't have bread, and you're saying, why don't you eat cake? No, you know? I think Twitter is not the place to have these debates, mm. frankly. No, but uh, that, there's a, the, the, in that metaphor, I feel there is at least a, you know, I mean, I'll, it, it's, it's nasty, okay, mm-hmm. but if you take away the nastiness, there is the point that's being made, which I suppose is that there isn't enough bread going around. Mm hmm. There are only that many institutions. As of today, this academic year has this many hundred thousand students mm-hmm. who need to be admitted this year, mm-hmm. and social justice needs to be provided to them yesterday, not just today. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So, from that perspective, when you come and say, "Let there be more colleges," no, no. Look, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you're, first you ask me for a solution. Yeah. So, my solution is capacity, capacity building. building yeah. But uh, I would say that the challenges of social justice are mul- multifarious mm. and they can't be addressed by a tweet, you know, so they can't be addressed so on Twitter. Now so now we can, when we, when we look at uh, social justice, we, look, we have to look at social justice for all, right, for all. Uh, and I think that uh, that's the premise of, of liberal democracy, that we, we, we look at social justice for all, including the socially underprivileged, the economically underprivileged, the regionally underprivileged, the linguistically underprivileged, the gender underprivileged, the, uh, the you know, I, even ideas underprivileged. There could be people who, there are groups who are left out because of a certain, uh, the, the way they, uh, you know, the way, you know, for example, the, the, their sexuality, there are groups that are left out because of the ideas, there are groups that are left out because of, uh, because of uh, geographical isolation, there are all kinds of exclusions, yeah. right? So there are mu- in a in a country of, of multiple exclusions, and in a country of multiple um, disability, multiple so disadvantages, uh, we have to design policies which create social justice, deliver social justice in an incremental way for every community, right? For all disadvantages, to all disadvantages. Now. What I was doing in in that particular uh, book is I in that particular para hmm. in that particular section I was examining all the instrumentalities that exist. There is capacity building, there is reservation, there is um, in fact a community 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 oriented uh, initiatives. Uh, there are civil society initiatives. So right. Civil society gets together and, and you know, does some, without relying on the state. Uh, there is uh, there is state action. Uh, there is uh, also, you know, I think um, international connectivities, mm-hmm. uh, you know, international 
solidarities across borders where countries can combine under UN forums or under multilateral forums to create capacities for multiple disadvantages. So I was looking at a set of uh, variables mm -hmm. that can come into play looking at, at for different sets of disadvantages. Reservations, yes, of course, there are there are certain there are important uh, important instrument. Again, do they work for all disadvantages? Do they work for every set of exclusion? Does it work for uh, every set of, uh, of 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 lack of privilege? We have to examine that. Does capacity building work for every set of disadvantage? We have to examine that. So you know the issue is really extremely complex, and in a mosaic of communities like ours, in a kind of a with with competitive, it's a competitive, competitive mosaic. Yeah, actually, it's a competitive can I, can I mosaic. If, if it's can, a competitive mosaic. If I can take you so there. in a competitive mm -hmm. mosaic, we have to design. Now I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a um, I'm not in government <laughs> yet. Yet. <laughs> Yet, uh, but uh, if I were to design a policy of so social justice, if I was uh, if I was a social justice, uh, if I was making social justice policy, yeah. uh, I would first have multiple stakeholders talk to me about their disadvantages, right? All their disadvantages, and we would have to sort the the solutions out through mutual dialogue and debate and consensus building. Okay, so that two, is my position. I, I'll respond that to it in two ways. If I'm sorry, me. I'm not going to go. To, I'm not going to be pushed to a binary of no, yes no, and no. No, 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 no. Because you see, no, I, I, the I'm binary of yes, and, yes and no, uh, I think is doing an injustice. Not at all. Not at all. I'm not trying to, to push you into to a the, binary. To the to no. the to the issue. Yeah, to the no, issue. I, I'm, my only thing is, uh, you said there needs to be a discussion and things like that. A, my immediate like knee jerk reaction to it is, it's a little late in the day. You know, this is a discussion that has already. It is, ha yeah, it is, a, it is happening. Stage, it is, of course, yeah. Is but you know, I'm saying matters. if I was a, if I was, if I was a, if I was in a policy making position, then I yeah. would get a discussion going. Okay, but uh, this thing of competition that you referred to, right? Uh, there is. There is competition. Okay, uh, but when you talk about affirmative action, when you talk about positive discrimination, mm -hmm. right? When you talk about uh, representation in, in in within the frameworks of. D E I mm -hmm. and all of that, you know. The question arises as to what is, and this applies, I suppose, to liberal liberalism when you talk about the economy also, mm -hmm. free competition, right? Is there really uh, no? Is there no? One, one minute. Is there really? Uh, is society free? Firstly, for people to compete. Society freely? is not free, which is why we need dialogue. Hmm. We so need we need interaction. The competition. When you say when you make a call for competition, it's, it's no. Like, I'm not making a call for competition. Hmm. I'm recognizing competition. Right. Right. I'm recognizing that there is competitiveness between this mosaic of communities, hmm. and therefore, in order to militate against the competitiveness, we have to have first and foremost dialogue. We can't be in silos abusing each other. Because you see, what happens on Twitter is somebody's in a silo abusing me. I'm in a silo giving my view. Somebody's in a silo talk. So unless there is cross-silo dialogue and debate at the very start, at the very start, and I'm not going to be pushed to one line. I'm not going to be pushed to say uh, yes or no. I'm not going to be pushed to uh, come down on no, either no, side because, to do that. because yeah, these no, are no. these issues are too too complex, you know, and they're too complex and they're the sensitivities are too high. So therefore, at the very start. If I was social justice minister, <laughs> I would get a dialogue going. Okay, fair. Yeah. Now uh, I leave it at that, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, once you become this politician who we can actually take <laughs> when you have now you have don't even have a slate. We can't say you have a clean slate. You don't even have. No, a I slate don't have a slate yet. So when your slate is a little uh, I, you know, I mean, populated, I, I, we'll go after you. Yeah, okay, yeah of course, please. This, I, I, I welcome it. Yeah. I totally now welcome it. I don't think it will be fair to. Yeah, do I that. totally welcome yeah. your, uh, your. Now questions. I think the the frame of this 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 uh, conversation or this interview itself is how does Sagrika think? What's your ism, <laughs> right? So uh, by way of parting, if you'll allow me to, uh, just ask you to do on this what do you call it rapid fire types. No. Yeah, yeah, please. Huh. So these five big, four or five big isms of the 20th century, you mm -hmm. saw the framework mm -hmm. for the uh, this election series, mm -hmm. right? So uh, how relevant are they in the 21st century is the, is the scope of the inquiry. Mm -hmm. Now I want to ask uh, Sagarika, I'll name one of, each one of them. You say yeah. how you how, how feel about them and where mm -hmm. do you think they stand. Right. Okay. Uh, because it's Bengal and because you've only recently replaced them, Marxism. Marxism uh, too reliant on the state, not enough emphasis on individual agency. Too reliant on the collective. Any sympathies at all? 
sympathies for many uh, for uh, Marx's social positions on uh, doing away with social evils, doing away with uh, obscurantism, doing away with superstition. But uh, the distrust of the individual makes me mistrustful of Marxism. Political relevance? Electoral political relevance? None. Really? So, uh, except in one state. I think Marxism is full of intellectuals. Mm. And intellectuals, I don't think, make good politicians. Okay. Um, which one is next? Uh, you pick. Feminism. <laughs> Very relevant. I consider myself a feminist. Mm. And I think men should be feminists. Mm -hmm. I love to quote Gandhi that... Uh, but can men call themselves feminists? Of course they can. You, you can, can have feminist men, of course. You're not appropriating. Not at all. I mean, I think, you know, the, 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 I, I love the concept. I love this concept of the girl dad. You know, that men who have daughters call themselves girls. I think, I think, look, Gandhi used to say that those who obstruct the rise of free independent women actually obstruct the rise of free independent men. So, uh, so I think the solidarities across gender is very important. That's, from, that's feminism for me. And um, gender solidarity, gender equality of all genders and uh, solidarity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And liberalism, your favorite is? My favoritism is liberalism. <laughs> I'm a classical liberal. And do, Rule you of think, law. do you think that people are still confused about what liberalism is? I think so. Because That's why I've written this book. <laughs> so now the people should read my book and see, understand what is liberalism. Why understand I'm a what liberal. is liberalism? Yeah. Okay. So this is why I'm a liberal and manifesto for Indians who believe in individual freedom. Okay, we get a frame like that. <laughs> okay. This is my book on liberalism. So uh, that's the, what the, the reason why I wrote this book hmm. is because when I would tell people that I'm a liberal, they would say like, "What is that? What is liberal?" So then I realized that the Hindi word is udarvadi, udarvadi, udarvadi. accepting, tolerant, accepting, tolerant, hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, negotiation, dialogue, reconciliation. Uh, uh, looking for the best in every and every, a little elite also. It's sadly, it's become elite. Because it see, shouldn't can you, be. Can you expect it shouldn't be. You know, Gandhi, you know, as I said, as hmm. I told you, hmm. Gandhi is not just the fa father of mo India, modern India. Gandhi is the fa father of Indian liberalism. I tell everybody to read Gandhi if they want to know what is Indian liberalism. Indian liberalism, okay. Indian liberalism so, is Since you brought up Gandhi the, anyway, we'll, yeah. we have just a minute or so to go. Yeah. So, Gandhism versus Ambedkarism, not versus, Gandhism and versus. Ambedkarism. I don't want to put verses. Mm. I mean, I've, I, you know, Gandhi is my hero. I, I admire him. Ambedkar is another hero. I admire him. I believe that the, you know, I, I can consistently come down to it. I am a believer in synthesis and dialogue. I don't want the Twitter-driven silos of are you this or are you that or are you saying no to this or yes to that. No, uh, I, I, are you saying, you know, are you living in this pol polarized world of yes and no algorithm-driven polarization is not. I'm, I'm resisting the social media algorithm-driven polarization. That is, that is something I resist with all my so heart and soul. So the dialogue of Gandhi and Ambedkar is what I'm after. The dialogue of liberal and... Uh, and, and, and and maybe rightism or leftism or you know let, let, let's let's what is what is a democratic mandate a democratic mandate is a practical instrument by which we which we use to engage in dialogue not just with people who voted for us but with people who didn't vote for us right so I, I talk to people who know who, who you know who may disagree with me who may agree with me but also I want to be a politician who can engage with people who disagree with me. What should not happen to a democratic mandate is that it should not be weaponized. A mandate should not be weaponized to persecute, harass and threaten those who did not vote for you or those who disagree with you. Super. Okay, I think that's the show. But did you get your? Thank you. Do, do you think? Do you think you got your say? Uh, do you think? That you, was a wonderful yeah? show. I loved it. I loved the questions. Thank you. I loved the way so you approached it. So my entire thing is that you should talk and that I should give yeah, you a chance to no, talk. Yeah, I, I You know, this is the first time I've done such a cerebral interview. I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, really. I mean, normally <laughs> it's just bang, bang, bang on politics. No, and no. But so uh, can I'm I so can I take a promise you from you? So now, yeah. because this is an introduction of Sagarika, the yeah. politician. Okay, and like I said, you, well, your, your said, slate is said, not colorful But yet. as I said, I continue to write. I yes. continue to to be. Remember, I'm a Rajya Sabha member, so yeah. I'm not in thick of in Lok the thick Sabha, of things. But I but predict that things will the, happen. Uh, You're I, in a party uh, like TMC. You so will be I'm not rolling the, your sleeves up and hitting the campaign. Yeah, I I admire the TMC for 
for its for its formidable, uh, you know, for the formidable bulwark it is against the BJP. So will you promise me so, uh, when you have a slate which is colourful enough? Yes. You will promise me an interview. Sure. And sure. It'll be, it'll be. I'll really go after you that time. Please do. You get your please say? do. Huh. You know, I think uh, I I'm I'm I, I remain completely on the journalist side when it comes to questioning, interrogation. I do not believe in executive overreach. So, you know, I'll be open to questions. And you will speak about us in Parliament? I will. I will. I certainly will. I will right. certainly take up the cause of journalists and media. I mean, this is this is my... I mean, you guys are my first love. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, so, of course I will. And, um, and you know, I don't like to think of it as that I've left journalism or anything like that. I, I continue to, to write. But yes, I'm in party politics. So, I can't be a working journalist. Mm. But I continue to, to write. That's what... Writing is... You know, I'm addicted to writing. I'm actually addicted to writing. Okay, but I'm still going to say farewell. Writing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> From journalism. If you insist. <laughs> yeah. I mean, next time we're going to meet as journalist and politician. Yes. Now, this time we were like halfway. Yes. Okay. But, uh, so that was Sagarika Ghosh and her ism. Some of you might have disagreed with what she said. Some of you might have agreed. But I'm pretty sure all of you know where you stand at the end of this discussion and what's your ism. Thank you. See you next time. <laughs>